What's up everyone? Scott the Trower Hammer here. Uh, I couldn't really wait. You know, there's a... My plan was to wait a couple more weeks to come salmon fish, but I want to catch salmon so bad. I miss the flavor of salmon. And I want to teach you guys how to catch salmon. So we're at the San Yam River, and a spot where a lot of the salmon come through to spawn at the, what they call the deadline. This is my favorite spot to fish. I'm going to show you guys uh, rigging, setup, techniques, bait, and we're going to catch some salmon. So our rigging for the day is my eight and a half foot heavy action rod. The heavy action rod because you really got to horse these fish around. You really don't want to lose any leverage on the fish when you get them on the hook. I've got 50 pound braid as a backing. I've got 20 pound hydro float line as sort of a main line going to a drift bobber. So that's what this is. It's a bobber that's designed to be used in the drift. It's a 5 8 ounce weight drift bobber. So it's pretty heavy, helps you cast that far. And the idea is it slides up and down the line so this stays on the surface of the water. And I have a bobber stop up here that keeps it from going too far up so I can keep it at the depth I want it to be. And the thing about using a drift, floating drift rigs for salmon fishing is you want your bobber to be straight up and down as it's floating down the drift. If you have too much weight below it, the bobber's going to do this because your line and your leader and your weight underneath are dragging underneath. If you have too little line, your bobber's going to do that as it goes down the as it goes down the uh, current because there's too little weight. So the way I've got the setup, I've got about a half ounce worth of egg sliders, my swivel, and then a couple split shots on 30 pound mono going down to going down to an octopus hook with an egg loop knot. So this is a pre-tied leader that I bought. You can find these at Bymar Sportsman's Warehouse pretty much anywhere. And the bait we are using today, we are using salmon row as bait. So this is stuff that I bought pre-packaged. It's already cured, already ready to go. Reason why we use this bait for, to fish for salmon is they're not eating this stuff. They're not attacking this stuff because the fish is hungry. They're going for this as an evolutionary response. The fish come through here. They want to spawn. They only want their hereditary line to thrive. When they see row come down, they know it's not theirs. They go after this and they swallow it. I mean, they just hammer this stuff. And they do it out of a desire to have other fish's hereditary lines be diminished. So it's competition. It's, it's an evolutionary competition. So they're attacking this stuff because they don't want a competing fish to have more fish in the system than they do. And when they go for this stuff, they don't just bite it, they swallow it. Some other things you definitely need when you are salmon fishing is a net that has a good amount of reach. This one has, this one I can, I can extend another pole's length. Uh, pretty much don't need to with uh, how deep the water is out here. And the kind of netting this is, it's got this rubber coating. And I have that so if I'm fishing in a system where a certain species of fish is prohibited, I could get the fish off the hook and release it. And this netting doesn't harm the fish at all. It doesn't remove any scales. The fish will still be completely intact. and a club because when you get these fish in the net you want to club them in the head you want to hit them hard you want to stun them so you can bleed the fish and get it back in the water until you're ready to leave so what i'm going to do here i'm going to take about about a ping pong ball size worth of row then i'm going to take the egg loop and open it up on this knot. I'm gonna stab the hook through part of the skein. That'll actually help keep the bait on your hook and the skein is the name of that thick membrane that houses the eggs. Then I'm gonna wrap the egg loop leader around the wad of bait and cinch it tight so it stays around the shank of the hook and that hook point is still exposed. So when you are drift fishing, you are going to have to make a lot of casts. You're going to have to cast over and over and over again until a fish actually smells your bait and comes over to eat it. And it's always best to start shallower with the depth of your bobber than deeper. Get an idea of how deep the area you're fishing is and then adjust accordingly. So I've got to about the depth I know is out here. You don't want to cast too hard because you don't want all your bait to fly off the hook as you're casting. And your bobber's going to drift downstream. 
And what you need to do, and this is why you have floating line with the drift bobber, is you need to mend your line as you go. The current is going to carry your line faster than your bobber because the line's lighter. And that's why you have to use a really long rod. So what you're going to do is pick up and then back. And you're going to have to keep doing that, trying to keep your line tight enough to where you can reel down and set the hook on a fish, but also loose enough that's going to let that bobber drift down freely. You have to do this over and over again, mend the line. You want to keep the line to the right. So if you're fishing the current going to the left like I am, you want to keep the line to the right of your bobber. If you're fishing with the current going to the right, you don't want to keep your line to the left of your bobber. And you also want to kind of lead the current. You want to cast further into the current. So it gives your bait more time to draw bite. You don't want to cast directly in front of you because it's not going to drift very far. So you're going to see a couple of times when you're drift fishing, your bobber is going to kind of bob into the water. Don't freak out. Don't try to set the hook at that point. A lot of times that's actually your bait bumping the bottom and your bobber just kind of slowly loads down into the water. It's, it's like when you snag something with your rod and your rod just kind of slowly loads up. You don't want to set the hook on that because then you're not going to get free. Just give it a second. It'll get itself free. The current will move it. And then just keep mending your line. Yeah, you know you get a bite when you're drift fishing if your bobber just vanishes. If your bobber just sinks down into the water and doesn't come back up. When that happens, reel down to your bobber and set the hook. Just ram it home. You want to get that hook as far into the bone of the fish's mouth as possible to keep that fish from getting free. I've lost a lot of salmon when I couldn't get a good hook set on the fish. They are strong. They are the strongest fish I've ever caught. Even the stocked ones. I mean, I've caught wild salmon, but even the stocked ones put up an amazing fight. So they make a lot of powders and a lot of gels and oils and scents and stuff that you can put on your, on your uh, salmon row to attract a bite. I've actually been you know, this is me personally, I've been a lot more successful just using the row by itself. I mean, salmon have an unbelievable sense of smell also. So I know a fishing guide who takes people out on rivers and, and uh, like out in the Columbia and out in the, out in the bays to catch salmon. I think he also uh, guides the Alsea River. And he said salmon have such a strong sense of smell that if a salmon could be on land, if the salmon could travel on land and you took a used gym sock, tied it to a chain and drug it behind your vehicle and drove from Newport to Boston, if that fish could be on land and travel on land, that fish could find that sock all the way from Newport to Boston. That's how strong their sense of smell is. You know, they spend a lot of time out in the ocean. They've got to learn how to, they got to learn how to find food in a big, big area. And when you're fishing for salmon, when you're when you're drift fishing for salmon, you can't get road stare. You can't get bored, check your phone, look look away from your bobber, talking talking to people that are around you. You've got to keep your eye on that bobber every minute it's in the water because these fish will take it, hit, run, and you've got to be ready to set that hook on the fish. And see where this is a unique challenge for me right now. I've got to keep looking away from my bobber. I keep looking down to make sure my camera's still running, make sure the battery's still good. Don't want to catch a fish off camera, because then you guys won't see it and you won't believe it happened. <laughs> All right, so once your skein, once your salmon row kind of looks like that, where it's really just the membrane and a couple of eggs left, that's time to rip that off, throw it in, and rebate. You know, I hooked into a wild coho last year in the Al Sea and I could tell it was a coho by it thrashing right out of the water right out of the water right beside me and I could see in into its mouth and I saw a lot of white so when the fish broke off <laughs> when the fish got itself off my spoon I was like oh well not too bad not too mad I gotta see it it was a good sized coho and when you cast with drift with a drift bobber you don't want to cast really hard 
because you're going to just break up your bait and it's going to spread throughout the water. And so what you want to do is you want to use a rod that has a real limber tip like this one does and just lightly catapult it out. I mean, if you're using the correct amount of weight, line, and bait, the rod will almost cast itself. I also don't like letting my bait drift too far down for me for the same reason as not casting too hard is because when you're pulling against the current, that current and you pulling is going to just rip that membrane apart. You know, even though that membrane does a real good job of keeping the row together, it's still a relatively soft bait. So if you reel real hard against the current, you're just going to break up your bait and you're going to lose a lot of bait that way. So what my line has started doing, I don't know if you guys could tell right before I started reeling in, but it's starting to get a little wet, get pretty soaked, so it's not floating as well. And when that happens, I'm probably going to switch to a different style of fishing. Probably throw around some big spoons or big spinners for salmon. My line's having a hard time floating, sitting on the top. Yeah, I never knew the importance of a net for salmon fishing until last year when I hooked into my first steelhead ever. And it was a giant. It was about as long as my leg. One of the biggest fish I'd ever seen. And I got it right up to me here in this calmer spot. And the only net that I had was my smaller net that I use for fly fishing, because I'm only catching like small fish for, with that. And <laughs> I was like, okay, get, you know, keep tension on the rod in the, in the crook of my arm and I was thinking like put the tail of the fish into the net and then just use both ends to hoist the fish on land as soon as I tried that fish thrashed again broke free swam off so yes you definitely need a good and good sized net while salmon fishing salmon of the year. All right, with salmon, you really got to utilize your drag. You got to let them fight when they want to fight. So they are a strong fish. You really want to tire it out. Keep tension on the line at all times. You want a fast reel, so if a fish if a fish goes to you, you can catch up with it. And you see, I'm doing everything I can to keep that fish down in the water. I don't want him thrashing on the top. You come on back here.
And that's how you do it. Get them in the net, get them on land. Check real quick. Okay, that is a stalker. This is why you need that club. When you get that fish out of the water, club it like you mean it. Got to stun that fish. And there we go, guys. That is how you drift fish for salmon. Look at the size of that thing. And get this thing weighed before I bleed it out. About eight and a half pounds. Decent, decent fish. The next thing you want to do when you catch a salmon, you want to bleed this fish. So that fish was clubbed real hard. He's stunned. He's not going to go anywhere. So what you want to do, get my camera at a good angle. What you want to do, reach into the gill and grab that whole gill line. Do that on both sides. So the fish is still alive. It's hard as beating. So it's going to pump out all that blood. And you actually want to do that for the quality of the meat. And it'll help kill the fish faster. Yeah. All right, guys. Got one fish in the bag. And right now the limit in Oregon is two adult salmon per day. So I'm going to keep fishing for a little while. Hopefully I catch another one. Not only is this some of my favorite fishing to do, but oh, this saves so much money. <laughs> I mean, that, that fish right there has got to have close to $30 worth of meat on it. I mean, that one fish already pays for the price of the salmon tag. And I'm going to keep catching salmon this year. So right now, we have an overcast day, so I really don't have to worry about this, but something you want to do when you're salmon fishing, especially steelhead fishing, because those fish have terrific eyesight, is when you cast out, you want to obscure yourself from the sight of the fish. These fish have a great sense of sight. And when it's sunny, you want to stay in the shadows, or a situation like this, what I'll do is I'll cast out, I'll leave my baler open for a second, and I will back up the bank so I'm a little further away from the side of the fish. And I'll just hang out here, mend the line accordingly. <laughs> Come on, there's got to be more fish in here. I refuse to believe I caught the only salmon. I've been, I've been here for about an uh, hour, 15 minutes or so. I got one fish, you know, there's, there's guys on the other bank, they haven't caught anything yet. Okay, that was a nibble, so there is another fish over here. That was not the bottom, because the bottom will down it up real quick. Alright, I'll show you guys something real quick. See if I can get over to my fish without getting myself wet. So, the two most common salmon species here in Oregon are the coho and the chinook salmon. And they look almost identical. The way you tell them apart is inside the mouth. If there is a white line on the bottom jaw of the fish, like there is here, that is a coho salmon. The chinook salmon don't have any white in their mouth. One of their nicknames is black mouth. That's how you tell them apart. And also, please, please, check your regulations before you go salmon fishing. There are places where retention of a certain species is either restricted or prohibited. And I know with the water system of fishing right now, hatchery, chinook, and coho, you can keep. I think you can also keep wild chinook and coho here, I think. But I've never seen a wild Chinook or Coho in this part of the river. Oh, it's almost time for me to go. I want to catch one more. Never had a two salmon day. <laughs> Kinda
Come on. One more fish. One more fish. One more fish. Come on. Come on, everyone. Say it with me. One more fish. One more fish. One more fish. One more fish. Ah, <laughs> please. You know, this is early in the salmon season here in Oregon, so the fish aren't spawning yet. They don't have their spawning colors. The cohos and the chinooks aren't getting that. Well, guys, got to call it. You know, wife gets off work in about an hour. I'm about 45 minutes away from home, so got to get there in time to pick her up. But, you know, for, for the kind of fishing day I had, you know, can't really complain. One really good-sized salmon. I've never had a two-salmon day. I've also never caught a jack. That's a smaller salmon. I've only ever caught, like, one big salmon when I go salmon fishing. And, you know, like I said, I won't complain. A lot of meat on that. I'll be thankful for it. I had a great time fishing. I hope you guys had a great time watching me. If you guys did, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you guys had any questions or any observation you guys wanted to share, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer all your questions. Thanks for watching. And, <coughs> as always, tips up, tight lines, have fun fishing.